Welcome. Good morning. Good morning to our online group as well. We're continuing in James chapter 3, living a wise life. And today, as uh, Dick just said, we're talking about being considerate. Well, we, anyways, we're kind of talking about that, but we're kind of talking about a few other things as well. That'll make a little more sense when we get a little farther down the line. Get used to the question because it's going to keep coming up. How was your week? But how wise was your week? Thinking of that. We're talking about living a wise life, so the changes that we can make to live in better wisdom uh, from what God has taught us. What did you learn from last week that blessed your life and the lives of others this week? How did you do with making wise choices? And you're, as you're faced with wise making a choice of wisdom, do you ask God first? James 1.5. The reason you don't have wisdom is because you don't ask of God. So being for uh, thinking in asking God for wisdom. Applying his wisdom from above, that is first of all pure, then centered. Because of being at peace with God, leading to being a peace-loving person. Because it's information leading to transformation through application. If we don't change, it really doesn't make that much of a difference within us. These are bigger concepts talking about the mindset that we can develop to having a wise life, the realizing that uh, God's hand in it. So we're going to go a little further into James 3.17 this week. Today we continue our examination and understanding of the passage. We add to what we have looked at previously, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all, what's the very first trait? Pure. Then? Then peace-loving. Pure is that foundation, the center of the wheel that holds it all together. Because we have an internal purity that's been given to us by Jesus, it leads to us following his example, being more like him. We become peace-loving or, you know, peacemakers, peaceable people that are at peace within ourselves, then we share that peace with others. Today we talk about wisdom that's found in being considerate. And the next in the list, when we look at the passage, but the wisdom comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, Submissive, pay attention to those two words because we're going to look at other translations or other passages today. Considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Synonyms and antonyms. We've been doing definitions. I thought we would do a little verbal definitions today. What are some other words for considerate? Gentle, that's stepping ahead one slide, but that's good. If somebody's considerate, they're what? Thoughtful. What else? If you're considerate, your other ways to say the same thing. Kind. Caring. Caring. Courteous. Empathetic, courteous. Not just pathetic, empathetic. Consider it. Wisdom from above is considered. Well, what other ways do we describe that? If you have a thesaurus, like I did online, you might find some of these words. It's kind, thoughtful, polite, careful, concerned, generous, mindful, tactful, courteous, benevolent, observant and gallant. You like that word gallant? We don't use that enough. Gallant. Something from that internal character of kindness that shows that kindness to others. Wisdom from above is first of all pure, peace loving, then you might be thinking of some of these words. They're in the sermon handout if you're going to pick that up later. So what's the opposite of being considerate? Rude, selfish, that's not very considerate when you're, what? See, James is about action, isn't he? What does this look like? What does it look like when we do it well? What does it look like when we don't do it well? If you're not being considerate, you're being 
Inconsiderate. How about a pretty obvious one to start with? What about unfeeling? You, you're not being considerate. You don't know what I'm going through. You're not connecting to where I'm at. You're unfeeling. You're disrespectful, selfish, thoughtless, impatient, inattentive, scornful, mean. How would other people describe me? Which of those two lists? Which words might come up when they think of who you are? Your character, how you interact with them. Are you known to be a polite, careful, concerned person or a little unfeeling, selfish, thoughtless, impatient, inattentive? What does it look like in action? Who are we as people? And how can asking for God's wisdom help me change? How can I be more like the first part of the list and work on less of the second part of the list. Now one of the words that Dick brought up right at the beginning is gentle. Most of the translations, the majority, don't use considerate, they use the word gentle. We're going to explain that in a bit. So what are some other words for gentle? If somebody's gentle, they are considerate. considerate. There's the connected word. The two have a relation, don't they? If you're gentle, you're... So we kind of used up your word box, didn't we? Tender, soothing, tender-hearted, delicate, amiable, flexible in that way, lenient. There's the word that I really want you to focus on this week. Lenient. That is a very important word for what we're going to be talking about. Somebody who's sensitive, sensitive, civilized, soft, calm, deferential, that knows how to, how to make it fit with different people. Serene, tranquil, moderate. Again, what are some opposite words for somebody that's not gentle? What does it look like when we're not being gentle? Abrasive. Abrasive. Intense. Uncivilized. Uncivilized. Agitated. Agitated. Wild was the first word that came up. If you're not gentle, wild, savage, untamed, untrustworthy, drastic, harsh, rigorous, rough. Uh, that should be severe, not serve. Vicious. Vicious. I mean, that's, again, how do people describe you? Are you known to be a considerate, gentle person? Is that how you're known? Or are you more the other way? Some things you need to focus on. And how can asking for God's wisdom help change us? That's James. Put it into action. Not this way, but that way. Well, is the passage talking about being considered or is it talking about being gentle? The answer is yes. In the New American Standard Bible, but the wisdom from above, first of all, pure, then peaceable, gentle. What was the next word for next week? What was the word that comes after considerate? Submissive. Submissive. Do you see it there? No, different word. Gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruit, unwavering without hypocrisy. Weymouth Bible, uh, New Testament. The wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceful, courteous. Also submissive gets translated as not self-willed. Full of compassion, kind action, free from favoritism and from all insincerity. insincerity. It's more often that the translations use the word gentle, even the Aramaic Bible in plain English, but the wisdom from above that is pure is filled with peace, meek. Hmm. Now there's a third term we could have thrown into the mix. Considerate, gentle, meek, and attentive instead of submissive. Filled with love, good fruit, without division, does not show partiality. complex word translated different ways in different parts because the Greek is a high quality Greek. James picks these words, selects these words, God gives him these words that are not the common or most used words. We have another complex Greek word, a compound word taking two thoughts and putting them together and it has two related meanings so it can be translated either direction. 
Today's word refers to a specific type of gentleness, meekness, or consideration. A type of consideration that we see in certain situations. But it's a different word than when you think of gentle or gentleness in these passages. So I was thinking we've got a really good one for communion. We could use Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Same English word, different Greek word. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit, gentleness, different word. Ephesians 4, 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Different word. Not the same word, not the same connection. So I have a number of these words in the handout. Like I said, the word here, gentle, is an adjective from two words, ecos, meaning reasonable and fair, equitable. And as it says, no English word renders it clearly. A Greek word that has something that's too hard to translate as a single word, it's translated as a phrase. Seemly, equitable, yielding, gentle, mild, forbearing, fair, reasonable, moderate, equitable, fair. These the words come up and up. from only five passages again. Epi meaning fitting, and akos meaning equitable, fair. Fitting fairness. Appropriately fair. Not just fair, but appropriately fair. Equal justice. Gentle in the sense of truly fair, relaxing overly strict standards in order to keep the spirit of the law. Remember the word that I asked you to remember? lenient. Do you see that in there? Where you know the standard and you say there's a value in not taking it to the full extent. Equitably fair. Reasonably fair. An interesting passage because of how it's translated and where we get to with it. So with that in mind, Equitable fairness, leniency, as in there's the letter of the law, there's an absolute standard that we're called to, but how do you deal with people and how do you deal with yourself when you're not meeting that standard? It's first of all pure, then peaceable, then considerate, gentle, meek, lenient. Not that it ignores the standard, but it realizes you're not all the way up to the standard. Beyond justice, beyond ordinary justice, building on, builds on the real intent, the purpose of what's really at stake. True equity that appropriately fulfills the spirit, not just the letter of the law. Sermon on the Mount, you've heard that it was said, but I say. Jesus says there's a law, there's a standard, but I know where you're at and how to, get, how to help you get to that. It is the same word, this equitable fairness, this legal leniency in Philippians 4 or 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. That is, people know that they can come to you and that you teach the standard, but that you help them achieve the standard. 1 Timothy 3, 2 and 3. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle. Same word there, lenient. As in, understands the standard and helps people get to it. Not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. It's only in these five passages. Titus 3, 2. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always be gentle toward everyone. Even the word considerate there isn't the same word. It's the gentle word. Be gentle toward everyone. And our passage, wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate. Different translation in this word, but lenient. Knows the standard, but doesn't just keep, keeps the intent of the law without having to be to the letter of the law. And the last one, 1 Peter 2.18, slaves. In reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, here's the last use of it, 
Not just to the ones that, are, that know the letter of the law <clears throat> and help you get to that, but also to those who are harsh, those that don't, that have the, here's the rule and here's the rule, and that's the only rule. That type of harshness, where there's no context, there's no explanation, there's no mercy along the way. We see Jesus as the example of being considerate and gentle to many people, well, but also other times firmly opposing others. He knew when the letter of the law needed to be the letter of the law. <clears throat> when people were misusing the letter and the intent of the law. <clears throat> and he also knew when people were trying to do the law and that they hadn't quite got there. He knew how to argue, to be firm, like with the Pharisees, but he also knew how to be gentle with others. Jesus healing on the Sabbath, willing to associate with sinners and tax collectors. To the letter of the law, he wasn't supposed to, was he? But he treated them with kindness, compassion. He spoke harshly at times to the Pharisees because they thought that they were doing everything according to the law. They were the ones that managed the law. But he reminded them, you're not doing it the way that it was intended. He speaks kindly to the woman at the well, lepers, demon-possessed, Samaritans, and others who need compassion and mercy. He is considerate of where they're at and what the standard is. Keeps both in mind as he deals with people. Jesus shows the intent of the law, not just the letter of it, in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, but I say. Where they have misunderstood, they knew what the words were, but they're not necessarily following what the intent is. With the sermon, he clarifies the intent and application of the law as it applies to fulfilling the law, murder, hate, anger, adultery, lust, divorce, oaths, revenge and surrender, loving enemies, righteousness and action through giving, prayer and fasting, treasure in heaven, worry, judging others, seeking the kingdom work first, and the call to live the message, not just hear it. He clarifies all of these. You've heard that it was said, this is what I meant. In these weeds, in the words, we see Jesus showing a gentle and considerate wisdom from above that we are enabled to live through the work of the Spirit today. We can also understand this is what God says and why he says it. Jesus knew when to apply the full force of the law and when to apply the law with mercy and compassion. But take note, he always applied the law as he showed how to do it with gentleness and consideration. He didn't say, oh, that's what God wants or that's what Scripture calls us to, but don't worry about it, don't bother with it. He kept the law without having to be legalistic about it. Ephesians 4.15 calls us to do the same as we speak the truth in love. You speak the truth, but there's a loving way to speak the truth, not just a firm way all the time. There are times when firmness is needed. So how do we live a wise life and share the wisdom from above? How do we put this type of leniency, legal leniency, into action? We've got to grow in wisdom. Understand and appreciate wisdom comes from above and not something that you create or develop on your own. The problem with us deciding when we're going to be lenient is it's not usually the same standard. But when would it be spiritually helpful to somebody? And how? Ask for the wisdom and open yourself up to God's answer and how that will change you. Is it wise to show grace, mercy, compassion, kindness, gentleness, it, what's the wisdom in responding that way at this time? And read the Gospels to see times when Jesus shows that he is kind. Remember these words we looked at? He is kind, thoughtful, polite, careful, concerned, generous, mindful, tactful, courteous, benevolent, observant, gallant, soothing, tender-hearted, delicate, amiable, lenient, sensitive, civilized, soft, calm, deferential, serene, tranquil, moderate, 
and learn when you can show the same example. See how Jesus responds to different people in different circumstances to realize the spiritual benefit of uh, showing kindness and compassion. Get to know people and what's going on in the, their lives so that you can connect with them with the parts of God's Word that are beneficial to them at this time. Help them to apply the right passages in the right way. It's still going to Scripture. It comes at it with a compassionate gentleness. And be thankful that Jesus is considerate and gentle with you. And let that motivate you to show the kindness to others. Realize that Jesus calls us to the law, to the high standard, but he is lenient along the way. He helps us get to that, and he encourages us to always do a little bit better, to be more focused, and we can show that same consideration to people around us. The passage that I was thinking of, at first I was going to go to Jesus, the, you know, take my yoke upon you for I am gentle. Different word. The idea of this being compassionate leniency led me to thinking of Psalm 103. I want to think of the passage from the Psalms. It speaks of the character of God and today's call for us to be people of consideration and gentleness. So reading from Psalm 103, 8 through 12, can help us to focus on Jesus as the fulfillment of the passage, as it has us think of Jesus on the cross, bringing the passage to fulfillment. At the cross, we see the passage was fulfilled and why Jesus would go through the death on the cross for us. After each of these statements, we can, I think we should, say amen. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Amen. Does that not describe our God? The Lord is great, compassionate and gracious. Slow to anger? Amen. Abounding in love? Amen. He will not always accuse? Amen. Nor will he harbor his anger forever? Amen. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities? Amen. This is in Jesus as the fulfillment of this passage. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Amen. God loves those that are trying to fear him and show that in action. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. And the church says, Amen. Amen. When I think of this, this idea of God showing a kindness to help us get there, this passage comes to mind and I see a good connection as we meet around the Lord's table. As we break the bread and share the cup, we think of the kindness of God shown to us through Jesus. He's the one who doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, and we're eternally thankful for that. He has removed our sins from us, and we celebrate the truth by breaking bread and sharing the cup. Please bow with me in prayer as we get ready to break the bread. Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be here together today to break bread and to worship you as the God who is compassionate and gracious. You're slow to anger and abounding in love, and you do not treat us as our sins deserve. You treat us precious and valuable, even to the point of sending Jesus as our example and Savior. As we break the bread, we do so in praise of your love and kindness to us and the hope that we have because of Jesus. We break this bread and offer this prayer of thanks in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 103 takes note of the forgiveness of sins that God offers. As we see Jesus as the fulfillment of the passage, we take note that our sins have been removed by the shedding of his blood as a sacrifice of substitution. 
The one who had no sins has paid for our sins and removed them from us as far as the east is from the west. Each week we share the cup of thanks for the blood that was spilled and the power of the blood of Jesus in our lives and in our gospel message. Let's continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we share this grape juice together today, we are thankful for the willingness of Jesus to pay for our sins by his blood and remove our sins from us completely. As we share the cup with one another and with you at the table, we are blessed and grateful for your love and kindness. We thank you for your sacrifice and the purity that you provide. We offer you this prayer of thanks for the cup and for the many ways in which you bless us. In the blessed name of Jesus, our Savior and King, amen. Last week I had a little sign on the screen that said the no Jesus, no Jesus. And this week I put this one up. Be careful how you live. You'll be the only Bible some people ever read. <clears throat> You've heard that it said that a Christian is the only Bible that some people ever read. The intent of the phrase is to remind us that people watch how we live and not just what we say. God's word has a lot to say about money, worship, church, and being a blessing. So thank you for being here today in person and for those that are meeting online. We know that you have other choices. Thank you for being an example to one another and to others in your life by being here and also by supporting the work of the congregation, showing that, that the work here is a priority to you. Thank you for being a blessing. We need one another and as we share our finances together, we can do more as a group than we can individually. Next week, we're going to continue the series as we see the wisdom from above and the trait of being submissive. But as I already pointed out, there are other translations that use the same concept in a different way. Always ready to obey. Thank you for being together in worship, and may God bless you with a wonderful week as you serve in the kingdom and celebrate the gentleness and consideration that God provides for you to share with others this week. May they see Jesus more clearly through us, and may they praise Jesus with us.